Hello, hello everybody. How are we doing today? Uh, it is me, Dan, with my co-host Matt here for another episode of the Klein Podcast. Today we are hey. going to be covering a Karibo deck, talking about the upcoming Synchro Storm event, and just discussing the last couple weeks of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, how the meta changed from the month we moved over to April, a couple new selection packs, and so on. Hey, Dan, good to be back. Um, yeah, it's been quite an interesting one. There was a new release, and quite honestly, I feel like it did nothing. Uh, the With no changes to the Forbidden Limited list, it seems extremely difficult to take something new and see significant success with it, because you're basically forced into playing around the same decks that are currently very oppressive, and so it's a little bit difficult to get excited about the new cards. There's a couple that stand out, such as the um, Fleur Synchron, I think it is. Uh, yeah, that's the ticket. Uh, the Baron de Fleur, that card's pretty nutty. But other than that, like I've not really seen any Magic Cats. Um, is it Magic Cats or the Ritual Fiend? Magic Key. Magic Key. If it should probably been Magic Cats, it would have sold better. Oh, someone's got us, uh, Ultra Rare. Ah, uh, we'll fry it. Still a good card. Good. That's a very strong card. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's been. I was a little bit disappointed with the, the release of these packs because I re was really hoping they'd do a couple of things. One, add some more cosmetics. I'm super happy that we got a Moki Moki pet that we get from finishing our dual pass, but I would have loved to have seen some more of the little like creatures and some of the other, well, fields essentially, like just uh, that kind of stuff. Like it would have been nice to have a, uh, you know, a synchro field for the synchro event or something like that. We are getting oh, a flower gathering mate base and a uh, title <laughs> for oh, the Synchro Festival. So that's pretty cool. And I mean, it's it is something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think a lot of people are going to be on like Red Dragon Arch Fiend, Black Rose Dragon, Stardust Dragon, the usual stuff. Other Synchro themes. I'd hope to see Fortune Ladies. It sounds like there could be a lot that would be viable for this. What are your thoughts? So, my first and immediate thought was, like, can I play my burn deck again? <laughs> and, like, yeah, they gave me only, like, one Mishion, but, like, I I've not found a perfect way to look at the Forbidden list because they, uh, <laughs> they, they put every fusion and Xyz in the entire game on it and stuff, so if you try and just filter it by, like, this stuff here, you get like every card in the game and it's like completely ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's kind of useless. The only thing I've found that's like relevant is just like doing this. And uh, I guess Penelm as well. And just keeping Xyz and Fusion out of the filter result because it gets rid of a crap ton of those. And then... Uh, that, that does narrow it down to just cards that were already banned and limited and stuff. But at the very least, you can see... Oh, crap. I'm not supposed to include links. That's the other one. Uh, like You can see the Scroll of Iron is like, manageable now. Uh, so you can see like they banned Ghost Trick Skeleton, Multifaker, uh, Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, even though you can't link summon with it anyway. <laughs> like, well, I guess it's for this, so you can't give it to your opponent, right? Oh, they got rid of Benton! Hey, look, they did something right! Yeah, they got rid of a bunch of ritual monsters, uh, Pendulum Fusion monsters. Uh, Tuner Scheme, them hitting that, was a bit of a crushing blow. That was going to be, like, my ace in the hole, and they, they saw me coming. Um, Banquet of Millions, I saw that was on the list. Yeah, That's something that needs to happen gone. in the regular format. <laughs> DD Dynamite got a whack in the face. But as far as oh. I can tell, like, my burn deck, I think I only lost, like, a Mishion. They were pretty forgiving about it. Even the, like, self-TK decks, um, they, the Hippo spell, I think, took a hit. I don't actually see any spells on the list. Did I accidentally? I did, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I forgot to include spells. <laughs> uh, the, the Hippo Carnival, I recall, went to, like, one or something. Um... Oh, these are all the cards that are forbidden, right? It's all the cards that are forbidden at one or at two. Yeah, here it is. Like the hippo, the hippo thing went to one. It's sorted by how many I own. I probably should just sort it by like name, which yeah, of course you say, can't do. So that's fine. Maybe like, Elves Lich cards have been sorted. It's actually weird because when when you look at these, you can kind of get a bit of insight if they know what are problems based on the data. Mm. Like you can actually just look into the back end and it will tell you exactly 
how often a card is seen play, you can automate it to tell you what kind of, how long the games are, uh, what archetypes they are. This is all stuff that I do on a daily basis for, for my actual day job. Uh, so they know, and they can use that data obviously to curate this list as well as just sort of use eyeballing it, saying, okay, yeah, we shouldn't allow Exodia and stuff like that on the Nurse Burn decks to make sure that it's an actual synchro event. Right. But I'm hoping that they're going to take some of this data and actually address the Forbidden Limited list for the, the main format because it's really, really difficult right now, to, to be honest, to get excited about anything. Like, sorry, we're in a section where we're talking about the synchro event, so I'll go into like the, the main format and stuff like after we're done with this bit, but... Uh, I like being able to see this because you get a little bit of an insight of what data they're looking at and what the potential next steps are. Yeah. They, uh... The... <laughs> the self-TK deck was, like, the biggest thing for me because, like, while they did hit Hippo and they left, like, a couple of these dudes, there are some kind <laughs> I didn't know that, so he's probably playing for <laughs> oh yeah, no, of course we are. We're here every other every other Sunday, and we're going through fine. Today we're just kind of going through most made it decks, almost good enough decks, instead of me pulling up Attic Nisters again or something like that because the FNL list hasn't changed. But Dan's got me excited about Despia, but maybe we'll look into that another time. So you got the Ghost Ship. Uh, yeah, so I was playing this uh, because it's a monster you could search for for off of Chaos Space. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the problem is, is that you have to discard a dark monster to find it, and then it can't summon the ghost ship, which is why I got cut for Force Raider. <laughs> so, what about uh, Solar Wind Jammer? Doesn't that one just say if you control no monsters, plop it down and it's a level 5 light? It's a wind monster. Ah, oh, wind, okay. Which is which is why I didn't see play in the final deck, uh, which is why I was playing Force Raider, but again, I want to play something better, so this hand is a little bit... Yeah, this, eh, this is a big old go second hand. Yeah, and we're, but yeah, it's gonna be quite hard for opponent to kill me for a set wing Karibo, Ironically, if they even if they access code tool, um, I can't take damage. Oh look, opponent's playing burn. What a friggin' surprise if it's crying. <laughs> oh, that's not crying. He's got just such a challenge. The, the trophy, yeah. The trophy, yeah. <laughs> His name is Game Over. Oh, there's a good top deck. Oh, it is a light machine. Oh, huh. maybe I should be playing a single solo wind jammer then. That's a good show. Well, yeah, this time we remember the anima. Metal reflex slime. E yeah. Yeah, that's not. It's such an awkward time to activate it, but I suppose he was sick of it asking. Yeah, Which exactly. Which tells me he doesn't have a second card in his hand that it's asking about, because otherwise he wouldn't... Yeah, and... Um... This is uh, one of the things where I keep getting told a lot by a lot of people that the Selene laddering is really, really strong, but I have found in the last couple of decks I've been building, I don't end up with enough spells in my graveyard to actually resolve its effect. It's like, oh, you need to take three characters off of it. <laughs> That's like, oh, because 99% that. of the time, the way we're getting to Selene is by using spells. Yeah, and it's the last couple of decks I've been trying it out in is just not... Uh, it's just not been there. And there you go. We, this is the reason that we're playing Chaos Creepos. It's just that we have a 5 free access code talker, followed up by Black Master Soldier. Uh, to get the... just get over 8k. But yeah, yeah, it's... It's risky. Like, it's not... It doesn't quite have enough oomph. Like, if something goes wrong, uh, you end up in a situation where it's like, I don't have enough attack points to kill you. But the Chaos side of the deck worked really, really well. I just wish there was a one-card starter that made this... that sort of glued all this deck together. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like if there was a Tuner Kariba monster, this deck would be bananas, but like that that's ultimately what you need, is you need like Curry Zip or something, and it's a Tuner monster. Yeah, if they give me a Tuner Karibo that discard to search your deck for a card that has Karibo in its text and add it to your hand, then this deck I would absolutely do disgusting things with. Because then I got, I've got like Three extra copies of Five Star Twilight, three extra copies of Multiply. Uh, if, that's just kind of what we need. Just something that <laughs> just lets you get that consistency. Yeah, so I've got the Five Star Twilight. Um, we've got the Curry Bow as well. Opponent just passes. Uh, I can't summon the Curry Babylon unless I uh, do this bit first. Uh, yeah, so we go for a Galaxy Soldier play. And here's the reason that I do it this way, is that you can follow up the Curry Babylon. 
And if you've got the space, uh, you can go ahead and uh, resummon the five Grifos. So even if opponent access code talkers, you can just make um, the Link Spider and then summon Curry Babylon from your hand. Tribute to Curry Babylon, get back the five Grifos. And I go, like, okay, yeah, let's do this. Oh, yeah, and I get another multiply off of it. I always thought it happened every day, but then, like, if I had the power to just always get the card I wanted off the top of the deck, I probably wouldn't be playing a Karibo deck. Mm. I appreciate that you're always putting your uh, Utopic guy in the correct zone as well. Yeah, so why is that the correct zone for any of our first time watch? Because Relinquished Anima hits these two zones, and Geonator Transversor hits these two. And while no one really was on Geonator Transversor, after the NR Festival, everybody knows about the card now. Yeah, it's a pretty good card. This it... is the only safe zone on the board. It's not safe from Long Gearsu, but I've yet to see someone summon that card, so I don't really worry about it. Three token summon. Ah, Code Talker. It's, yeah, that's pretty pretty strong. Uh, just being able to make it off of tokens is also pretty huge because it gives you the, yeah, the easy access to access code talker with a link free and then we've got eight ties and 300 and we can negate a monster effect. I have noticed that across all of your replays, Babylon has like only done one thing. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, where, uh, where it's at, like it's, I literally it's just watched you have Multiply and Five Star Twilight and Flute. Like, you you had, like, all of your, like, extending power spells, and Babylon just sat in your hand. He was win more at that point. Yeah, that's that's the problem with the card, right? It's, again, we, if we had more consistent ways of getting to the core combo cards, then there might be a bit more room for it. But then, yeah, it'd be cool to go with chat after this last replay, and we'll see... If you guys want to make any changes, I'll even go through some of your replays, Dan, if you've got some for this week. I know you were sick, so I'm not sure how much you managed to get on the game. Oh, we got one left. You're one in plat, so let's check this one out. Sure. I honestly don't know if I have any replays. I don't remember the first week of April at all. Like, I'm amazed that it's April 10th. It feels like April 3rd to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh, I played just... Master Duel and I don't remember. I'll check, but I don't you think just I did. magically lose a week of your life. Mm. Alrighty, so you just passed on Duster, Lightning Storm, Ash, Valor, VLS. Yeah, we're going to go second, and our opponent made us go first, and our opponent's playing Dangerous. So I was like, ah, uh, okay. But I had the Maxi as well. Ah, uh, you just got a Nessie, that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll just try and keep him off more Danger cards. And then we're going to hope that the Effect Valor is enough to get us there. Was that a snow? Yep. Danger Dark World. But the good news is we got a Creepo, so it's not like we're gonna get a gate here, right? Mm. And I mean, his his card destruction discarded zero Dark World monsters, which is pretty helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do want to play around with uh, Dark World at some point. I just have to. I've got so many like concepts that I want to play with, but again, it's. Um... If you need to play, you need to have like at least nine cards to make sure that you can play against Joy Troll. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so I just ripped my multiply. Instead of your Karibo. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I've got more ways of getting the Karibo than multiply, so technically that's the right choice. But that's a pretty good top deck. Yeah, I'll say. That's Pretty insane top deck, actually. Uh, we'll just go ahead and slam bang our uh, Creepers. You had Anima take Graffa. You still have um, Anima take Graffa. I can't remember if that's what I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another 5-star Twilight. Yeah, 5-star Twilight can get the guys out of the graveyard, so we can use it with Curry Babylon look later if this turn doesn't go according to plan, and I've got another Creepo in hand. Eevee... EEV Turbo. What is EEV? Eradicator Turbo? Epidemic Virus. Oh, yeah. I really want to... I really like reading Grave Virus as well, actually. I was playing around with a concept, but it ultimately wasn't good enough. 
Anima. I already want to nice. build a um, Millennium Eyes Restrict deck, which actually is one of the other concepts, which we a yearly series. Because um, I did get it up to flat, but I was finding that my biggest problem was when my opponent didn't do anything. I just mm. I couldn't take advantage of openings. That was a deck. Oh, nice. Um, the Relinquished deck needs the Jin Releaser of Rituals legal. The day that card gets unbanned, Relinquished with Millennium Eyes becomes extraordinarily viable. But as it stands now, when you go first, you make Relinquished and Millennium Eyes, and Relinquished has nothing to like absorb. But with the Jin Releaser, the Relinquished is just a soft Vanity's Emptiness. So at least it's like the deck is doing something, and the hand traps let you equip your opponent's monster to the Relinquished when it's they summon it, and uh, it's the Millennium Eyes Illusionist, I think, does that or something. But, um, like, the deck has everything it needs. It's just that right now all it does is summon a 0-0 zero, zero vanilla and Millennium Eyes with, like, the one negate and the one hand trap for, like, a second one, which is not the end of the world, but, like, that's the same hand as Effect Veiler Impermanence. And, like, yeah, you don't have exactly. to discard and Ritual Summon and everything else to get to that, so... I was playing it with uh, Kaijus, the Relinquished deck, because you can essentially... Put it where you can put it exactly in front of the zone where you get Atma, and it just go ahead and absorb that guy. You get to play uh, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber and get yourself uh, Garmasil, and then mm -hmm. you get like extra negates in the deck. Uh, so the concept again is one of those nearly there, but it's just a case of like I haven't figured out what to do if my opponent does nothing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which incidentally almost every other deck could just punish you for, but. Um, Apparently I have a couple of replays from that same time period, but maybe we've already watched them. I don't actually know. I've made them public. Uh, I think we covered... Because these are exhibition ones, so these would have been the NR the festival. Memorial. Yeah, I think we covered these ones when we had MBT. We probably. Let's check the deck real quick. Uh, so that would have been on the 27th, which was last stream. So the last stream, these two... The 27th was yeah. the day of the last stream. Yeah, fair enough. Then we, yeah, we covered all this. I think. Yeah, he made the ancient sacred wyvern. I remember that. So yeah, um, I uh, I don't think I even really dueled. Uh, I'm gold five. Uh, whoops, how many games away from gold four am I? Have I even dueled this format? <laughs> yeah, I have one duel, and it would have been with bookbag turbo, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Hey, yeah. you know, you play Crystal Beasts with uh, True Kings, just realized, but mm -hmm. uh, seems kind of bad. Uh, yeah, so how about we pull up the Creepo deck uh, and see if you guys in chat want to help out uh, improving this deck. Uh, I, again, I'd really like to play Brian Skill Magician. Ready Fusion, famously very strong to go into this deck. Uh, uh, it's straight to the Fusion Summon. Could they just give us a fusion Karibo? That's level five. Mm. That'd be too much to ask. It's just like, I mean, yeah, when this got fusion summoned, add a Karibo card. Do you have? That would be nice, but like, just like a uh, ready fusionable level five Karibo vanilla. It's no different than the Theseus, who's even a tuner. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just no, just like the fusion monster just has to be when this card's fusion summoned, search your deck for a Karibo card. Uh, yeah. Soda Windjammer, yeah, Soda Windjammer should come in. Uh, we should probably take out one of the. Morse Raiders for that. I didn't actually I any of those replays. Or even maybe the one Babylon, because as you mentioned, the, the Babylon's Yeah, this thing is just the dark version of Solar Wind <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we can cut. Uh, we need a little bit more light in here, uh, so we can definitely cut. Is it even a normal? <sighs> Let's see. Um, I do actually really like the Nemesis cards. Uh, but we're not playing enough different types. Like um, they're both light and dark, so you can get them off of chaos space, which is a really cool thing about them. Oh, the big uh, ones, yeah. I was like, the nemesis cards are all elemental attributes. Oh, they're, they're all the elementals, guys. yeah. But yeah. Uh, being able to search for the the big guys, and we're playing too many fiends in our deck, I think, to to really make it work. We've got machines, we've got fiends. Got a warrior, we've got a dragon, we've got DD Crow. D Crows could probably be a better hand trap. We've got an awful lot of level ones to not have like wear Arf Thou or something in the deck. Well, here's the point. Why do you want to play Wear Arf Thou? Like mm. if you normal summon a level one and then play Wear Arf Thou, you're kind of like not in a great place. Quick play, quick play, not a quick play. What was his name? Quick booster? I don't remember what this card does. Wait. 
Alex, were you it? Were you at YCS Australia? That first one where um, T Silver won. I was actually there. Yeah, uh, he used to make Felgrand and that beast, uh, Anders. He's a good friend. Yeah, uh, there's there's no way to search for quick plays uh, effectively. Um, this is why Guild Brian Magician would be super good. Oh, you weren't there. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say Dark Magician Grog Map. I'm surprised he's not. Summon Skull, yeah. Gaia, Beal Buster Blader, Dark Magician. Yeah, can you just pull it up on the screen? I don't know if you just get like a off of Wikipedia or something and just I, I don't know how easy that is to do with OBS. Uh not amazingly hard, I just have to be careful. Um Oh yeah. I still think it's called Skilled Chestnut. I don't know why. It is called Skilled Brown. I'm looking right at it right now. I just And it's not because he's the bad one. It's not because he's the bad one. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, I should be able to uh, blank out the little mat in the corner and then add a new like window source here. I just gotta make sure I pick <laughs> the right one and don't click on anything stupid. And... Hmm. Yeah, don't don't know know that that doesn't sign doesn't sign too strong. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that's what you guys should see now. And then uh, I can just... Actually, you can only see your Master Duel game. Oh, uh, yeah, on the, the stream can see Skilled Brown ah, Edition. You're okay. watching on Discord. Uh... <laughs> yeah, the Skilled Brown Edition, which is... Oh my god, the uh, quality is so low I can't actually read the text. Uh, what's going on? Not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. It is yeah, full screened, time... so short of like zooming in. I could just pick up like the picture of the card by itself and zoom in on that. Like, well, yeah, it's this. basically uh, you can increase the level by one attack, which means it'll work with uh, the five star. Or you can add a Karibo monster or multiply from your deck of graveyard to your hand, uh, which then means if you've got flute summoning Karibo, you can uh, go off with multiply. Uh, so, this would be a very good card to include in the deck. I don't know if I, I wouldn't play three copies of it. But it's and it's a dark, so it would definitely get played in my deck. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's again, it's like that's just a problem I've got, right? Uh, let's make a card to fix the deck, and it, it's again what they really need is a single card that lets you start your entire combo. Uh, just like a Stratos for Karibos, uh, Karibo spells and traps. And that's kind of all the deck needs to to get there. And then I could definitely carry this deck would definitely see enough play because getting five monsters out of your deck is pretty powerful. Uh, you just see how ridiculous multiply is. There is the argument of maybe just uh, taking the five star out and focusing solely on the multiply Karibo plan. Uh, but then at that point you can take out uh, all of the other Karibos. But then we're starting to get away from the core concept of the deck, but I think that would definitely solve the consistency and you'd be able to be... You'd be playing a multiply deck instead of a uh, more Karibos deck. But from that point you get to cut... 1, 2, 3... Uh, 4, 5... 6, 7... 8... 9 cards from the deck straight away, so that give you quite a lot of room to play with if you could go down multiply. Because you wouldn't, uh, you could probably cut the five star twilight, or you could keep the five star twilight and then just play three copies of the ready fusion, because then that gives you more spells to resolve Celine. Mm. Uh, so then you're going to be more likely to be able to go ready fusion, uh, normal summon into Hulkery Firebrax, into Celine, then resolve Celine, go to Axis Code Walker that way. There we go. Now you can see what the stream sees. I figured it out. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, this was Animation Chronicle I was talking about before. This is where your Karibo friends are from. It's also where Fighting Spirit came from, and also where your ultimate Leo Utopia Ray came from. But it's pretty uh, good set, actually. <laughs> um, the, a lot of this set, like uh, the Noble Knight Spearholder and Floral Knights and stuff, were missing, and now they're in the game. The only card missing is this Rebirth Judgment card, but. Um, Rebirth that Judgment. Is an old card. Yeah, it, it was. Um, I mean, in Japan, it actually only came out like nine months ago, but um, it's from the anime. Uh, like I said, uh, Zane Truesdale uses it, and 
they also skipped over the cyber style, whatever it's called in English. Oh my goodness, I can never remember. Cyberdark, Cyberdark this, Cyberdark that. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be really, really hard to find that card. <laughs> Okay, so what was the core thing behind it? So we don't have to. Uh, just that that's the missing product that didn't come out was that Cyber Dragon structure deck. Ah, okay, yeah. I can just do it this way, like 2021. This is the, the order that stuff came out. Uh, yeah, Cyber Styles Successor, that's what they call it. Lightning Overdrive is in there. Um, we just finished getting like the rest of the stuff from July here King's Court. Burst of Destiny's the next thing. Uh, we got the rest of Dawn of Majesty and stuff as well. Um, Burst but... of Destiny. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Burst of Destiny is the next like major set. Uh, I actually have no idea what's in the set. I can't... Yeah, this is the one I said. They skipped over this. It's this from May of 2021. Uh, it doesn't have ter too terribly many new cards. Cyber Dark and Dragon. But uh, yeah, if we're lucky, maybe Infinite Impermanence will be in like a little starter deck that they give us. Lightning Storm. That was kind of cool. But uh, it is just a Cyber Dragon deck that is on the horizon. There's no way it's not in the next update. Um, Burst of Destiny, that's the set that like everyone's waiting for. That one has Small World. That one has Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. For the Destiny Small deck, World is set. a... I saw it when I was looking at the stream, and that seems like a, a quite complicated card. It's like you yes. build a card from your deck, then you add a different card from your deck to your hand, and then you banish one. It's like It does like four things. I was like... Try I didn't have enough time to read it on the stream and understand what the card was doing. So it's it's actually not terribly complicated, and it's one of the best cards in the game. Um, you, it, It's three monsters total get used. The one you start with, the one you want, and the bridge between them. And there's five listed parts of the card. The type and the attribute, the attack and defense, and the level. And uh, your starting card and the bridge can only share and must share one of those five things. So if they've both got zero attack and both have 500 defense, doesn't work. They have to have one thing in common with one another. So you could pick, say, Effect Valor as your starting one, and Ash Blossom as the second one. They both have zero attack, but where Z Valor's got zero defense, Ash has 1800. Where Valor's level one, Ash is level three. Where Valor's a spellcaster, Ash is a zombie. And where Valor is a light, Ash is a fire. So they only have right. one of those five uh, elements in common. And then you banish both of those face down, your starting card from your hand and your bridge from your deck, and that lets you search your deck for a third monster that, again, has one of those five things in common, but only with the Ash. It doesn't have to have anything in common with the Valor whatsoever. And Small right. World does not reveal the monster for cost. It does not banish for cost. If they Ash it, all that happens is Small World goes to the Graveyard, and they don't even know what you were trying to get. But ultimately, that Ash Blossom... You just pick something that has one thing in common. You could pick, like, I believe, Tour Guide from the Underworld. Because it's like a thousand, a thousand, and it's a Dark Fiend. So Ash is none of those things, but they're both level three. So uh, Small World would allow Effect Veiler in your hand to search for Tour Guide from the Underworld by banishing an Ash Blossom from your deck. It is a minus uh -huh. one. The Small World and the monster in your hand both are gone. But it searches your deck for quite literally any monster in the game. Uh, I believe the only card you can't search for with this is, like, the Creator of Light or um, certain, like, level 10 Divine Monsters. Because, uh, <laughs> like, the only other monsters that have, like, 10 stars also have, like, 3,000 attack or something like that. Like, it, it's incredibly narrow what this card can't search for, and it doesn't matter. Like, you don't care. Um, this searches for, <laughs> like, UXC. Hard. Like, it, it's really dumb. It searches for any monster in the game, effectively. And if you can believe it, there's also in the same set a monster that searches for any spell. Uh, any Lord of spell. the Heavenly Prison. And Small World can search for this guy, and this guy can search for Small World. So you just get six extra copies of every Yu-Gi-Oh card in the game. Hold, hold on, hold on. This searches for any spell. There any more trap. I haven't even built until the end of the adventure. Oh, this card is a little spell. So hold on, I can use this to find five star twilight. You could, yes. You can use this to get any spell or trap in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, including Small World, which you could then flip up to get any monster in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. 
Hooray, okay, so this solves some of my consistency problems. I could be doing stronger things than playing group, but <laughs> I like it, I like it. Yeah, this guy, you reveal him in your hand during your turn, and then during your opponent's turn, they can't duster you, they can't lightning storm your back row. He just turns off all the back row destruction. To say nothing of the fact that, like, he could theoretically get Imperial Order, and then you flip it up during your turn, and then they can't, like, you could get, like, Royal Decree, I guess it'd be probably a bit better there to turn off all their that card just got That card just got moved to Forbidden, didn't it? This one here? No, Imperial Order. Yes, yes, Imperial Order is forbidden in the OCG and TCG, so it's not long for this world of Master Duel, I'm sure. But, I'm um, say that, but then we're also looking at um, <laughs> very fun dragon. Yep. True King of All Calamities for yes. any non-OCG weed here. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, this guy here, I've done some atrocious stuff with this guy. My favorite thing to set with it is one for one, because then that gets you effect veiler. You normal summon anybody and make five racks, and then five racks gets another veiler, gets Selene, gets Axis Code Talker, wipe their board. Axis is 53, this guy's 3,000, you killed them from one card. Yeah, that seems good. Yeah, it just serves your soul charge, card. absolutely, except that soul charge is forbidden, but like, yeah, you can get rekindling with this thing, you can do, it banishes what it gets during the end phase, but that only matters for continuous spell or traps, because you're just going to flip up and use whatever else they are, to say oh, yeah, nothing of the fact like that, uh, he can be summoned during your own turn if a set card flips up, you, you, uh, you don't have to, you don't get the search, but there's nothing stopping me from like setting up Star Goblin and flipping it up to just give myself a free 10 star 3000 attack body. Like, this card is all kinds of messed up, and it's super rarely seen in uh, IRL play, but I feel like that's a matter of time. Um, the other one was, like I said, this guy here. This is the thing that, if this card was in Master Duel right now, I'd be building Despia immediately. It would be our feature for next week, or uh, next stream, rather. Uh, this is the Despia Light or Dark, and when you control this Fusion Summon card, your opponent must pay 600 life points to put cards on the field per card. You just bleed them to death. It's like the Red Eyes XE monster. Yes, or Chain Energy. Uh, and if your opponent controls a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Link monster, while this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. So you just... <laughs> like, here's, like, he's back. Like, you so you would run, like, two of this thing. Like, it's really oppressive what this thing does for the deck. And then... And you can summon up Instant Fusion. Not Instant yeah. Fusion. Uh, and then there's this guy. This is the one that, like, just came out in the TCG... And is why I would have been playing the deck at the YCS. This this is the thing that makes the deck, like, tier one. Uh, it's just three monsters with different names. So, first of all, Super Poly can wipe three of your opponent's monsters off the board. But also, um, it must be Fusion Summon using Fusion Materials from your hand and field. So you have to have one from your hand and one from your board minimum for this guy to come out. Uh, with at least one monster from each, yeah. I mean, that was already implied by saying and, but whatever. If this card is Fusion Summoned by a spell card or effect... Okay. As opposed or to... Effect. Yeah. Uh, so the, the field spell, which Fusion summons by effect. Um, you can draw cards equal to the number of cards used as material from the hand and destroy cards your opponent controls equal to the number of cards used from the field. So two from field, one from hand is draw one, pop two. Two from hand, one from field is draw two, pop one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm feeling like I should be playing Despia Karibo. <laughs> <laughs> like to say I play Poly, dump two Karibo from my hand. Draw two cards, seems good. I mean, you could just poly this guy using three Karibo names and like pop two, draw one, or draw two, pop one, whatever. But um, while this while polymerization is in your graveyard, your opponent can't target this guy with card effects, and he's 33 33. Uh, you can only use one opponent's monster with super poly for this. Yes, because oh. you have to use one from your hand and one from your field minimum to summon this guy. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would definitely play Karibos. Yeah, this card is sick, beyond sick. And, like, again, if you use, like, regular polymerization, which that Fright for Patchwork card searches for... Yeah, he becomes untargetable. Yeah, 3300 untargetable monster is pretty crazy by its own right, yeah. but the fact that it just, like, pops two other cards and draws a card is really, really good. Okay, you can't super poly it at all, because you can't use a card from your hand with super poly. That's a good check, Black Box Hand. Oh, thanks, Sam. And then the structure deck has this guy. Um, I, I can't, it's in Japanese, we don't have an English picture of it, even though it comes out in three days. But... Earl! Earl trans oh, you've already got the translation. Never mind, Earl, you my bang. No, 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 we're fine. Uh, honestly, like, you can still even say it says, like, he can Ryu and stuff. But um, you can only control one mirror blade 
and then once per turn during either player's turn, you can send a fusion from your extra deck to the graveyard, like an archetype fusion, uh, to banish one monster on the field without targeting. It's a quirk effect! Oh my god, yeah. what were you thinking? But this card can't use that effect next turn. So, like, I can't do it my turn, your turn. Uh, and then if this fusion summoned card and its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, even if they kaiju this guy, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls at the end of the turn. Oh, okay. That's, I was going to say, so he's also absolute zero. He's so much better than absolute zero, it's insane. So... It kills monsters in the end phase, so it doesn't, like, scribe their board immediately if they do get rid of it. Correct, but... but it does mean that they can't make a new board after he wipes it. That's true, you get to OTK them straight afterwards. No, this... Alright, so, Dan, this is your challenge, should you choose to accept it. You're going to do our next deck for the channel. Incidentally, guys, if you did tune in last week, I had the Pokemon Green Dragon Rod deck that I took all the way to Platinum 1. We're pushing that out next week on the YouTube channel. I've done a very detailed deck guide and a very detailed combo guide, so you can go ahead and copy that deck and take it all the way from repeat. I started a new account, got all the cards for it, and took it up. It only took about six days. Uh, so you guys can enjoy that content next week. And again, let me know what you think of these kinds of uh, features. I am looking very heavily to grow our YouTube following and sort of trying to make content that's more appealing to you guys. So any feedback you give on those kinds of videos would be great. But Dan, I think you should be doing a Despia one for the next <laughs> one. Yeah, like Lubelion's the other one. Foolish Burial, any dark. And if you fusion summon, discard a card. Fusion summon a level 8 or lower fusion from your extra deck by shuffling fusion materials into the deck from your hand, graveyard, or banished cards. And then for the rest of the turn, he can't attack, and you can't special summon from the extra except for fusions. Like, I, I don't care. This thing is just an extra fusion summon that recycles all your resources so the deck never runs out of gas. Yeah, this is another deck where you're just thinking, um, you know a load of the core cards, but this is going to end up a bit. Oh, you just uh, accidentally stopped sharing your Discord. Oh, yeah, you... you... No, I got it. <laughs> I, I was so that I could put Master Duel back on the uh, stream, so... The stream came before you did. <laughs> that's, no, that's sorry, that's fair, that's fair. Uh, I actually think uh, there's not really much more else to cover. Uh, that was kind of it. I've got, um, I've got another account that I'm currently working on, that Relinquish one, but we can probably cover that next time if I, if your Despia deck doesn't work out quite as you want it to. Mm. It's uh, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle without um, Chimera and Masquerade, but I do have and Branded and Red being missing is a big one. Like that's the a key starter card missing from the deck. But I'll still try. I still think it's like eighty percent as good as it needs to be. Ugh. Even in mid season, it'll be fine. Like uh, I mean, it is that is to say that when you get to Plat One at the moment, you kind of want to stop playing because. There are bots uh, playing that uh, Banquet of Millions deck, or I think even playing the, uh, what do you call it, the two normal Pendulum Warrior Monsters deck uh, that burns you Ignites. for a million. Ignite, yeah, Ignite FTK. Like, it's played, like the top ranks are played by those decks, because people go, oh, I can farm gems, so I'm AFK, and then they're just like, uh, they just let the bots essentially run. So you have to play like 13 card extra deck to not lose to the Banquet Millions deck. The Banquet Millions deck will then check and say, oh, I can't kill you. Or if it's going second, then it will just concede. Some people have even found out that some of the bots in the interest of saving time, if they activate Banquet Millions, you've got something like a Max C in hand and you just go walk away from your computer, the bot will concede to save time uh, instead of actually letting uh, letting you time out. But that I don't know, that's, that's kind of funny. Yeah, and it's just, the fact that that's kind of like a thing right now is a bit of an issue. Uh, and it's not enjoyable because like, if you build your deck specifically to stop those decks from beating you, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage from all of the actual games of Yu-Gi-Oh that you're going to play. Uh, which is why I don't like it. Again, this is one of the problems that you have when you're climbing through gold. Gold tends to be a lot harder because you'll find people playing Inspector Border decks, Stun decks, Altergeists. Uh, and then it's like, if I build my deck specifically to beat those decks, I'm going to lose to all of the decks that matter. So it's a little bit... But actually, I'd argue that Altergeist is probably a deck that should be seeing more play than it currently is. Uh, I've definitely always been impressed with it every time i played against it. <sighs> He's missing too. That's unfortunate. Sorry, I'm just building the deck while you're talking. 
And uh, ad libitum is also missing. <laughs> it sounds like I've set you a pretty difficult challenge here, right? Yeah, nothing I can do about it. If it's not there, it's not there. I don't have destroy Phoenix Enforcer either. <laughs> like, nothing I can do about it. I just gotta make it work. It's like one set, of, like the next set gives it like the other half of the deck, right? But uh, I, I do have, like I've got a Luber, I've got Branded Opening, I've got the Theater, like I, I've got building blocks to start with. I just gotta figure it out from there. I still have Dramaturge, still have Tragedy and Comedy. I got my like Despian. Fusions. I don't really have my Albaz fusions terribly and the Deer Serpents at one, but by gosh, I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> I'll find a way. Gotta get the Super Polys. There's two of those. I only have one. Lucky me. <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, I, I'm quite excited about this deck now that you point that stuff out. Um... I wanted to play Magic Key, but I think somebody mentioned this card's missing from it. Uh, I've seen quite a few people put guides out on YouTube for it, so maybe just wait a little longer for that. Uh, I'm not terribly excited to go and play a Synchro deck at the moment. In fact, I think my next deck that I'm going to be trying to work with is going to be something to do with the Nemesis cards. I think they are that strong, uh, and they're not being played anywhere near enough. So I'm probably going to take that kind of direction. And on my main account, I may decide to just go all the way to the top using um, Attic Mister. Again, if I just want to get the gems, or I could just leave it a little bit later in the season. It's hard to say. If there was like more frequent updates, then I'd be more inclined to spend my gems. But at this point, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't really know what where I don't I don't know what to get excited about. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Sam. That's kind of the the problem. Oh, Despia Predator Plants. I can imagine that was pretty disgusting. Someone mentioned Despia Predator Plants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Fair enough. Oh. I don't even know what other five cards I would put in yet. I'm going to have to think about it. I'm not going to do it now on stream. I'll, I'll give it some brain power in the next 48 hours and go from there. It's going to be like free draw on Lockbird or free in Perm, right? No, no. Like I, I've got... Uh, Gamma's, Maxi, Nibiru, and Ash. I'm not terribly worried about anything else. Okay. What What's missing is literally like two branded fusion. Uh, br it's called branded in red, and ad libitum is missing, <laughs> and um, like oh, yeah. starter oh, yeah. card. Yeah, Albaz guy, right? The full on Valbaz? Yeah, because uh, I wouldn't play him currently. He goes in like after the structure deck because all the fusions ah, okay, that okay. use like he's not used in the better fusion monsters. Uh, so, okay. he is used in uh, like that new one, the Mirror Blade, the Ice Jade Dragon or whatever. He's used in that and he's used in Lubellion, but... Um, is Fiendish Rhino worth playing? Because you can then dump your... Is it Jester or whatever? Uh, they're, they're actually fairies. Oh, they're fairies. Well, yeah, like Herald oh. of Orange is actually a viable option. Oh, no, not another deck that plays Herald of the Orange. <laughs> oh, wait, you can Eva. You can even Eva and search for these cards. Yes. Yes, you can. Oh, that's that's messed up. Yeah, so like, I, I'm gonna I give it some thought. We were getting thought. away from it. But no, like Arc Lord Christia and stuff. Like I, I'm gonna give it some thought, but I'll uh, I'll worry about it not immediately, basically, because people have better things to do than sit here and watch me think for half an hour while I stare at this screen. So, all right, then uh, I guess we should start wrapping this one up. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming by. Uh, we always appreciate when you're here. Um, I do deeply apologize that I had less replays. I had a pretty rough sinus infection for the last couple of weeks. I'm on my last day of antibiotics. Um, I take my last one tomorrow morning uh, when I wake up. So I, I, at least I don't have a headache right now. It's the first time I've been able to say that since the 30th of March. Um, as rough. always, it's really good to have you guys here. I'm going to nuke this real quick so that I have spaces because I'm running out of deck spaces and I don't play Karibos. Um <sighs> <laughs> that seems fair. That seems fair. We'll just, uh, we'll just act the deck that Matt spent like an hour and a half uh, discussing. <laughs> it's still built on your profile if I need it. <laughs> it is. I'll come back to it with some more cards. Um, but yeah, guys, if you could uh, let us know what you think of the raw profiles we've got coming out next week on the YouTube channel, that'd be great. And as always, if this is content you want to see more of, please feel free to subscribe and you'll be the first to know when we're going live again for the next episode of The Climb. We'll have 
uh, more exciting content, a little bit more competitive stuff we'll try and focus on next time. Yeah, thank you guys so much, and we will see you on the next episode. Yeah, catch you soon, guys. Take it easy.